One of the most common catchphrases you hear all the time about the playoffs is that every possession matters. If you have been watching the playoffs, one phenomenon that you may have noticed is that teams will run an unconventional defense for one possession before going back to their conventional coverages. It doesn't look like much, but typically that's a sign that defense has figured out the offensive play. While it may look difficult to see, today I'm going to show you a few ways you can see how a defense sniffs out the opponent's plays. In addition, We'll also explain why offenses may not care as much as you think. A lot of this sniffing comes from the luxury of studying your opponent for an extensive period of time. The Timberwolves love to run this action where Ant throws it to the strong side before throwing a cross-court pass and then playing off of that. The Timberwolves had destroyed the Suns with this action, so the Nuggets took note of this before Game 1. The Wolves try this in Game 1 as Ant throws it to Conley, but Murray jumps in anticipation of Conley trying to pass it. He has to dribble it through the defense instead, and he ends up turning it over. Another way to potentially recognize a play is by understanding the team's personnel. Here, Isaiah Joe is standing in the paint instead of on the non-shooter Josh Green. That's because he's more concerned about Green curling into the paint. Once that happens, Gaffer tries for the lob instead, but Joe's right there to break it up. Often, teams will zone up instead of guarding their man because they want to cover areas that they think the offense is going to attack. Here, Jokic wants Aaron Gordon to stand underneath the basket to prevent a backdoor cut. He also points at Anthony Edwards because he's coming off two screens to the baseline, so he stands where Edwards is going to be, and Conley then has to pivot to Cat instead. Cat tries to go at Aaron Gordon in the post, but he misses the shot. Pointing is also a dead giveaway that teams know something. Justin Holiday points out the actions going to Cat before Conley crosses half court. The Timberwolves still run the play because Cat has a mismatch. That's when the double comes, which allows the ball to swing to Anthony Edwards, but he just misses the three. Other times, coaches will observe what's happening during the game and then make adjustments. Against the Mavericks, the Thunder had a hard time guarding Luka Doncic and spread pick and roll, so they had a feeling that it might come again. So Mark Dagnall holds his fist, which indicates that the Thunder are running a zone. Now the Mavs have a counter for that zone as they run a double ball screen instead, but that doesn't really matter to the Thunder because notice how Shea makes sure Luka can't turn the corner. That forces Luka middle, and he ends up having to try to force a pass in the paint. But coaches can only do so much coaching, and the players have to figure things out as well. In game one, Rudy Gobert had gotten burned on the Nuggets signature play where they run the pick and roll and Jokic throws the lob to Aaron Gordon. But Gobert took note of that and he was ready for it when it mattered most. In the fourth, Murray runs the dribble handoff with Jokic. Gobert sees it early so he steps up to bait Jokic into the lob and he ends up swatting it away. You might be wondering if the defense should try to be more discreet about what they know. But basketball is one of the rare sports that the defense won't hide if they know a play is coming. Just listen to Minnesota's head coach Mike and Nori call out Denver's play. Two on towns. 7-16 to go here in the third quarter of game one. Even though he clearly calls it out, the Nuggets still run the action as Jokic cuts to the post. And Kat's in pretty good position, but he just fouls him. The reason that offenses don't care that much is because offenses are more versatile than just that one play. So as long as they can flow into another action, it's not a really big deal. To start the second half, Jokic didn't even look at Minnesota's action, and he's able to point Jamal Murray to the wing so that Anthony Edwards can't come off the flare screen. So the Nuggets blow up the first action, but Jaden McDaniels is able to screen Porter out to force Jokic on the perimeter, and that opens up a cut for McDaniels to the rim. Here's another example from the Pacers Knicks series. The Pacers want Halliburton to attack Harden side in the pick and roll, but Diva Chenzo ices the screen to force Halliburton to create off the dribble. He's able to pump fake Dante and get a decent look, but at the end of the day, he wants to attack Hardenstein. So, a few minutes later, the Pacers have Aaron Neesmith run a flare screen, which gives Indy a few options. Instead of using the flare screen, Halliburton tells Opie Toppin to throw it to Turner. And that allows Halliburton to use both screens to get the ball and the mismatch. Turner's open down low now, and he's able to get fouled. And then sometimes, even if defenses blow everything up, there's just so much talent on the floor now. Here, Halliburton announces that they're running flex action, 
which is basically two screens that flow into a dribble handoff. Because DiVincenzo heard the play, he top blocks and Hart switches to nullify the action. But Turner just takes Harnstein on the perimeter and he scores. The Pacers also got a taste of their own medicine on the other end. Halliburton barely chases DiVincenzo because he knows that he's coming around the screen, so he just meets him at that point. Brunson doesn't really care because he's able to ISO Neesmith one-on-one and he's able to knock down the jumper. So understanding what teams like to run and stealing a possession is a great way to create those advantages, especially when games are often close. But the reality is that teams are going to know what opponents are running. But where I think the fun really comes in is that coaches and players can design plays that can counteract any sort of defensive adjustment. At the end of the day, great offense is going to be great defense and running more versatile plays along with great talent is the key to doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.